Hello, welcome to Technology for Fun Home STEM Projects. I'm Caroline Allister, the Mechanical Design Engineer. I'm also a STEM educator and author of the Technology for Fun books and teacher resources. This is what we're making today. It's a vibrating brush monster. I'll show you what it does. This is what you'll need. A dustpan brush, wide enough to stand on its bristles without falling over. An eraser, about 10 to 15 grams. A two times AA switched battery box with flying leads. Two AA zinc batteries. A motor two crocodile leads, three rubber bands about nine centimetres long and two paper clips or if you have um, cable ties you can use them instead and decorations such as pipe cleaners and googly eyes. In the notes below this video I've put some links to where you can buy electrical parts Make sure you use zinc batteries, not alkaline or rechargeable batteries. If you use alkaline or rechargeable ones and then you accidentally short circuit the battery box, i.e. connect it to itself instead of going via the motor, then it can get really hot, give off smoke and burn your fingers. Zinc batteries are better at resisting the flow of electricity so the battery box won't get so hot. And you'll need a ruler, a ballpoint pen, and some blue tack. Step one is to fit the eraser. Measure and mark a line across the middle of the eraser. Make small crosses at two millimeters from the center in one direction. and six millimetres from the centre in the other direction. Place the eraser on the table and push the motor shaft vertically downwards through each of the crosses. Leave the motor pressed into the second cross. Step two is to fit the motor Use a piece of blue tack to position the motor near the bristle end of the brush with the eraser hanging over the end. Use a rubber band and paper clip to firmly attach the motor to the brush. Push the eraser around in a circle to check it doesn't touch the end of the brush. If it does, then adjust the position of the motor until it doesn't touch. Step three is to attach the battery box. Take the lid off the battery box and fit the two zinc batteries. The flat end of the battery should be pushed up against the spring. Refit the lid. Put a couple of small lumps of blue tack on the bottom of the battery box, the switch is on the top side. Place the battery box on top of the brush, leaving a gap so that you can clip onto the motor terminals. Then press down. Check the switch is in the off position. Tie the two wires from the battery box in a reef knot. This is so that the metal ends are less likely to touch one another and cause a short circuit. Step four is to attach the crocodile leads. Clip one crocodile lead onto one motor terminal and the other crocodile lead onto the second motor terminal. 
lay the crocodile leads across the top of the battery box. Use the second rubber band to attach the crocodile leads and the battery box in position. Clip the other ends of the two crocodile leads onto the metal ends of the two wires from the battery box. Fold the wires up neatly and use the third rubber band to hold them in position. Step 5 is to switch on the brush monster. Switch on the battery box and check the eraser on the end of the motor shaft goes round. If it doesn't, then try to work out why. For example, the eraser could be jammed against the end of the brush. One of the crocodile leads could have vibrated loose. Or perhaps you put in one of the batteries back to front in the battery box. Or maybe the batteries aren't in good condition. You could check the voltage is around one and a half volts if you have a multimeter. Step six is to decorate the brush monster. Use googly eyes, pipe cleaners and any other decorations you have to personalize your brush monster. You could also give it a name. Step 7 is to try out the Brush Monster. Place the Brush Monster on a smooth table and switch on. Be ready to catch it if it falls off the table. How does it move? Does it go in a straight line or round in circles? You can give it a push to see what it does. If the eraser falls off, then hold the back of the motor and push it back on again. If it keeps falling off, you can use a small blob of blue tack to help hold it in place. What else can you do? You could try taking the eraser off the motor shaft, then putting it back on at a different distance from the centre whilst holding the back of the motor. Can you identify a difference in the way the brush monster moves according to how far away from the centre line the eraser is mounted? If you swap the two wires over so the motor turns in the opposite direction, does this affect the movement of the brush monster? You can try the brush monster on different surfaces such as wood or vinyl flooring, carpet or tarmac. Now my son, who is a physics student, is going to tell you about the science behind the project. Here is a diagram representing the electrical circuit in the brush monster. Symbols like these are used to represent the components of the circuit. This represents the battery, the switch, the motor, and the straight lines of the wires connecting them. You can see here the gap in the circuit when the switch is turned off. When you connect the battery up to the motor and turn the switch on, electricity flows around the circuit as electrons, causing the motor to rotate. Chemical energy is stored in the battery. When the circuit is complete, this chemical energy is then converted to electrical energy flowing around the wires and kinetic energy in turning the motor. A small amount of energy is also given off with heat and sound energy as the motor turns. Some materials allow electricity to flow through them easily. These are called conductors. Metals are an example of good conductors. Other materials resist the flow of electricity. These are called insulators. Plastic is a good insulator and so is the air around us. When you connect the crocodile leads up to the battery wires, the clips need to be in good contact with the metal parts, not the plastic parts, otherwise the electricity cannot flow. The eraser is mounted on an offset hole, so as the motor shaft rotates, the centre of mass of the eraser moves around in a circle about the motor shaft, here shown with a black dot. 
The force is generated by this and transmitted through the motor to the brush, or in this case by hand, causing it to vibrate. If you instead mount the eraser further from its centre of mass, then the brush will vibrate more. If the brush has bristles which are sloping, then the bristles move more easily with the slope than against it, so the brush tends to move in that direction. This is much easier than this. Since the centre of mass of the eraser moves around in a circle, the force generated by it has vertical and horizontal parts. We can explain the forward movement of the brush by producing our own vertical force by pushing down on the motor like this. The sloping bristles help it to go in one direction. The horizontal part of the force can encourage it to turn. When we combine these two, we get something like this. Thank you for watching. This project is taken from my book Technology for Fun 2. For more ideas you can visit my Technology for Fun website.